Well, if that didn't wake you up, I don't know what's going to do it. Uh, thank you, Dick. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll let that one slide. <laughs> uh, welcome to Athens Christian Church. It's good to be here this morning, and certainly in the company of all you fine folk, and I'm glad to see everyone's in here, and hopefully you'll all be here next week, despite being kind of possibly drained by a week of hot weather, but we'll hope for the best. <laughs> I say we're truly blessed to be able to come here together today as members of the family of God. I'd encourage you, if you haven't already, as always, to take a look at today's bulletin. There's always good information in here, but also there's a a special uh, Sunday Connection thing going on tonight that if you haven't heard of, I encourage you to take a look. Um, There's free food and desserts and all kinds of yummies and and also a uh, dunk tank. So unfortunately, Shane hasn't signed up for it, but depending on how you feel about uh, Pastor Ken and his sermons and such, you have your chance to take your frustrations out on him, possibly. But uh, it should be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of folks coming there that, especially, you know, folks... All of us here, we may not have seen normally, so it's a good chance to get together and, and just kind of talk to some of the folks that you might not normally see on a given Sunday. So I wholeheartedly encourage you to take a look at that. Our call to worship today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verses 8 through 14. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness in the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled, and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness in the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. While none of us here, as far as I can tell, are in chains today, we certainly make our own distress through our actions outside the will of God. However, we know from this psalm that he breaks those chains and he saves us from our distress when we call on him. And our first hymn today, I think, is quite a comfort in that regard. Number 319, if you're using your hymnals, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, I invite you to stand if you're able, and we'll be singing all four verses this morning. thank you for today. Thank you for the blessing we have of worshiping you in this place. Thank you for breaking those chains that would hold us down otherwise when we call upon you. 
Thank you for your provision, your grace, and your guidance always. Lord God, please bless our worship now, and please guide us this morning so we will learn more about you and your plans for us through Shane's sermon to come. And I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And I invite you to keep standing as we go on to our second hymn this morning, number 334, a little farther back there in the hymnals. We praise thee, O God, our Redeemer. We'll be singing verses 1 through 3. Before you sit down, I'm sure you have already, but do be sure to say hello to someone nearby this morning. <laughs> Our prayer list is on the back of your bulletin today as usual. We want to be a praying church, and we're also praying for the family of Nancy Terrell after she passed away on Tuesday. Kelly and Steve Bandy will especially hold you and your family in our hearts to God we know Nancy was your aunt and dearly loved within your family. Nancy taught our three-year-old Sunday school class at Athens Christian Church for 36 years. Can you imagine? How many gospel seeds do you suppose she sowed into the hearts and minds of little boys and girls who grew up to be men and women and still embrace the faith today? And who volunteers every week doing anything for 36 years. That's rather amazing. And so we know Nancy's reward is great in heaven. And likewise, you may not have known, but our medical missionary friend Garnet Calzada also went home to be with the Lord. And we're just confident she has a huge mansion in heaven. She helped so many poor people in Mexico and actually had a great impact on our church family. She came and visited us. We sent groups every summer that worked with her. Uh, when my son was 15, he begged to go to another country without my wife and me. And um, I convinced my wife that he should go. And uh, he went into medicine because he went and worked with Garnet Calzada. Uh, the next year, he went back three weeks and worked with her. And um, one day he called and he said, Dad, I'm driving Garnet. We're going up into the mountains today. I said, oh, Keith, be careful. He said, how fast do you think I'm driving Garnet's van? You never want to hear that from your 17-year-old in another country. He said, well, this is a long straightaway. We're going 90. 
And I said, Keith, Garnet was like a grandma to my son, Keith. I said, Keith, Garnet's going to be scared to death. And he said, Dad, she's sound asleep. <laughs> they drove up in the mountains and delivered babies and pulled teeth because Garnet was like a doctor. She was a nurse, but she was like a doctor to those people. And um, I just think we should give thanks for the wonderful lives of Nancy Terrell and Garnet Calzada because God has been good to work through those ladies. And likewise, Mary Buttry, we've prayed for you, and we're glad that you're back with us after your surgery. And we always underscore Ukraine. Let's keep praying for the nation of Ukraine. And don't forget this connection card in the seat in front of you. You probably have a prayer request, or maybe you're aware of a personal need that if we knew about, we could uh, be a blessing to someone else. So jot that down and leave it with us. If you're a guest or visitor today, we're especially glad that you're here. And we hope that you would leave us your name and contact information so we could tell you more about the Lord and about Athens Christian Church. Our verse of the week today on the cover of your bulletin, Matthew 22, 37. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. But thank you for worshiping with us today. We're so glad you've come. We hope that you find a good blessing in the Lord as we worship him and seek him together. Thank you so much. Our prayer hymn this morning is number 442 in your hymnals. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee. We'll be singing all four verses today. Imagine with me, if you would, a 12-year-old girl is getting ready to have a birthday party. She's going to be 13. She's going to be a teenager. And for this special occasion, her mom tells her that she can invite 10 friends for this special occasion. And the invitations are sent out, and all 10 friends RSVP to attend the party. She's so excited. What a party this is going to be. 
And the day has arrived. It's finally here. It's her 13th birthday. And a little before 8 that morning, her mom receives the first phone call. Friend number one had something come up and is not going to be able to come to the party. Oh, not a big deal. I mean, her other nine best friends are still going to be at the party. Everything will be just fine. But one by one throughout the day, the calls come in, and each of the other has an excuse as to why they can't make a party. All the other nine call off. They're not going to be there. And the mom looks at her daughter, and of course, she doesn't want to break her daughter's heart. Her daughter's been anticipating this for weeks, and now no one is coming to the party. And so in an effort to save the day, her mom begins reaching out to some of her other friends. And most of those friends can come, even on short notice, but there's still room for a few more. And so the mom invites some of the other girls from her daughter's class who usually get left out. Right or wrong, that mom doesn't want any spots left in case one of those first ten girls calls back and now wants to come. Pretty horrible story. But if you've heard it before, maybe you caught on. But if you haven't, Jesus tells a story similar in Luke chapter 14, verses 15 through 24, where we'll be this morning. And every Sunday of 2022, our Bible studies focus on Jesus through the eyes of Luke, from Luke's gospel and his book of Acts Every Sunday, we study and apply God's Word. And this morning, Jesus invites us to dine with Him at a feast. And we can choose to join Him, or we can make excuses as to why we can't. What will you choose? As we study God's Word this morning, go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 14 with me. As you turn to Luke chapter 14, again, our passage is 15 through 24, so hold on to that. But we're going to take a quick look at the verses preceding to see what our passage is about so that we can understand as Jesus tells the parable of the great banquet. Let me set the stage for what's about to happen in Luke chapter 14. We'll look at verses 1 through 14, the verses leading up to our passage. Jesus is God's Son. He's the Messiah. He's the chosen one who has come to set the Jewish nation free. Not in the way that they expected, but He was the Messiah, the chosen one, and he would eventually set the entire world free. Now, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. They were expecting a Messiah to come. They knew a Messiah was going to come, but they didn't think it was Jesus. And even as the Son of Man, even as Jesus stood in their presence, they didn't believe it was him. And so whenever Jesus was around, they tried to to trip him up. They tried to trick him, to catch him in a lie, catch him disobeying the law. Anything they could do to prove that he wasn't the Messiah. And they were so focused on what they believed the Messiah would be. They were so focused on following all the laws of the Bible, plus all the laws that they added to God's law, They were so focused on how people perceived them, what people thought about them, so focused on playing God that they didn't recognize the Son of God as He was right there in their presence. And so starting at the beginning of chapter 14, Jesus is going over to eat at the house of one of the prominent Pharisees. In our day, He might have been referred to as one of the elites, one of the big shots. This Pharisee that Jesus is going to eat with is a big deal at least in his own eyes or in the eyes of the other Pharisees. And like Jesus, they're, like, uh, like usual, they're trying to trick Jesus by catching him breaking the law. And so they take him past this man who had a disease. It was the Sabbath day. No work was supposed to be done on the Sabbath. And so they walk him by this man with the disease, and Jesus asks the Pharisees, he says, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And the Pharisees knew the law. They know, knew you were supposed to rest on the Sabbath. And because they were so spiritual, they had actually added more laws onto God's law about how far you could travel on the Sabbath, what was okay to do, what was not okay to do. But before they could answer Jesus' question, Jesus healed the man and sent him on his way. And then he asked, well, what would you do if your son or one of your livestock fell into a well on the Sabbath? Would you not pull him out? Pharisees couldn't answer the question, wouldn't answer his question. 
And so they're, they're gathered around to this Pharisee's house at the table, and Jesus looks around kind of where people are, are seated, and he noticed that the Pharisees took the places of honor at the table. And so Jesus tells them this parable before we get to our parable, starting in verse 8 of chapter 14. It says, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you'll have to take a least important place. But when you're invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted." In New Testament times, the closer you sat to the host, the higher you stood on the social ladder, and the more attention and invitations that you get to the next party. And so many people, as they came in, immediately rushed to the head of the table when the doors were open because they wanted to be important. In this parable, and when Jesus healed the man with the disease, Jesus was teaching the Pharisees that God wants us to put others ahead of ourselves. But the Pharisees were so focused on themselves that what Jesus said in his story went went in one ear and out the other. So in verse 12, Jesus speaks directly to the host of the meal, the, the Pharisee whose house he was at. Verse 12, it says, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And Jesus says, put others first. Reach out to those in need, those who need help. And then we reach verse 15, the beginning of our passage this morning. It says, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Here we go. It seems like at least one person who was at the table with Jesus actually heard and maybe even began to understand a little bit of what Jesus was trying to teach them. Because the man said, blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. He had just heard Jesus say that when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be rewarded and blessed in heaven. And so he comments to Jesus, well, well, the guy who does the things that you say, he'll be blessed to eat at the feast in the kingdom of God, right, Jesus? But notice that his focus remains on himself, what he'll get out of it, what benefit he would gain. And his focus still wasn't on helping others. And so Jesus continues on in verse 16 and begins to tell this next parable, the parable of the great banquet. We'll read 16 and 17. Luke chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and inviting many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. If you're filling out your note page in the bulletin, we just discovered number one in verses 16 and 17. Number one, the first guest list. The man in the story that Jesus was telling was having a great banquet. And he sent out invitations to a large group of guests. Now it's kind of interesting to note that back in Jesus' day, when invitations were sent out, it was done a little bit differently. If I was having a party and I was inviting all of you, I would send out the invitation, and on that invitation, you would expect it to have the day of the party and the time of the party. Yeah, you'd want to know when it started. Well, in Jesus' day, when invitations were sent out, they would send out what day the party was going to happen, but it wouldn't have what time the party would be. Because what they needed to do was get the the RSVPs back. They'd need to know who all was coming, and then they would start preparing the meal to make sure they had enough meat, enough preparations. And then once everything was ready, then the host would take his servants and he would send them out to get the people and let them know that it was time to come. 
So these guests that they went out to get, they had already agreed, we will be at the party. They had RSVP'd, the host was expecting them to come. And we read on in verse 18. It says, but they all alike began to make excuses. First said, I have just bought a field and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Why couldn't this first guest come? Letter A, excuse number one, my stuff is more important. I can't come to the great banquet because stuff is more important to me than the commitment that I've made. It was just an excuse, though. It's very unlikely that this man would have bought a field without already have gone and looked at it. And secondly, if it would have been necessary for him to go out and check out that field on the day of the banquet... He could have gone earlier in the day. It would have taken most of the day to get this banquet prepared, and he could have looked at that field earlier, but it was an excuse. And his excuse was, my stuff is more important than the banquet. He wasn't the only one making an excuse that day. Verse 19 says, another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on the way to try them out. Please excuse me. I can't come to the great banquet because my work is more important to me than the commitment that I've made. This man had just purchased five yoke of oxen. Seems odd, though, that he wouldn't have went out and checked out these oxen before he bought them. What if they were unhealthy? What if they were sick? That's not the way it worked. He would have went out and checked these oxen out before he committed to buying them. So it was an excuse. And his excuse was that his work was more important than the banquet. There was a third guy who made an excuse, verse 20. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. Excuse number three, my family is more important. I can't come to the great banquet because my family is more important to me than the commitment that I made. That was really no excuse at all. If his wedding date would have fallen anywhere close to that banquet, when he got the invitation for the banquet, he would have just declined. I can't make it that day I'm getting married. Marriages back then didn't just happen overnight. There was a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, a lot of preparing. He knew that he would be getting married, and he could have turned the banquet down. But all it was was an excuse. And his excuse was his family was more important than the banquet. And so three guests who had already committed to the host that they would be at the banquet came up with excuses as to why they couldn't be there. And so what did the host do? Read verses 21 through 23 with me. Servant came back and reported to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry, ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. What do you want us to do now? And the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and make them come in so that my house will be full. Number two in your outline is the second guest list. The host now has all his food prepared. He's got it all ready for the banquet, but his original guests have made excuses on why they won't be coming. And so the host invites a second guest list. He invites the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. Now, those people usually weren't invited to these banquets. So they would have been thrilled to receive this invitation. And many of them accepted a spot at the table, but there were still empty seats. And so the host sent his servants back out to the farthest reaches, to those considered the lowest of the low. And he said, when you reach them, make them come. Now, why would he have to make them come? Wouldn't they be so excited to come? It's a, it's a great banquet, great food, free meal. I, I would think that they would be jumping at the opportunity before the servant even finished asking if they wanted to come. Yes, yes, yes. They didn't make excuses like the first class, but consider this. They were so looked down upon by society that they felt they weren't good enough to attend the feast. And they wouldn't have the right clothes to attend an event like this. And so even though they would have wanted to attend, it would have been very easy for them to feel like they weren't good enough 
to attend. And so the host told his servants, make them come to the banquet. And then verse 24 finishes, I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. So those guys that made excuses, who had heard the master's call but chose not to accept it, they no longer had the opportunity to attend the banquet. Now this parable that Jesus told the Pharisees was to let them know that they should be careful to follow God and not look to their own good works, their own law following to save them. And while Jesus shared this parable as a message to the religious leaders of that day, this parable still applies to all lost sinners today. And so there are some thoughts that we can use to apply this message to our lives today. Jesus is saying to us today, all things are ready. Jesus Christ has paid the price for our sins. The work of redeeming us from our sins was finished when Jesus Christ died on the cross. The heavenly feast is ready. The invitation from Jesus is free and available to everyone. Everyone is invited to come, but we must, number one, put God first. Which really ties in with number two, make no excuses. Why would we want to settle for second best with our lives? Why hold back from following Jesus completely? Why make excuses that might make us look better in front of others, but worse in the eyes of God? God is not looking for excuses. He's looking for us to put Him first in the way we live for Him, in the way that we love Him, in the way that we serve Him. There's nothing wrong with owning stuff, nothing wrong with working hard, nothing wrong with spending time with our family unless those good things keep us from enjoying the best thing. And then they can become bad things. When it comes to following Jesus, make no excuses. Follow Him first and then enjoy His blessings in your life. And then finally, number three, go invite others to the banquet. If you know people who have not accepted Jesus' invitation to receive his gift of eternal life, invite them to his table. There's still room. And we are God's servants in this story. We are to go out and let everyone know that the banquet is ready. So go, invite others to the banquet. Jesus has laid out a great banquet. He's invited all of us to come. Accept his invitation without excuse. And when you have, remember the words from the hymn, There's Room at the Cross. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Let's stand, I'll pray, and we'll sing. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we're here in your house together this morning, God, we thank you that you had your words recorded so many years ago so that even today as we gather here in the church, we can hear your voice, we can hear your heart, we can hear your love for us. But Lord, let us not turn inward to ourselves and focus on ourselves. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you and on those around us. Lord, you've prepared a great feast. Help us bring others to that feast so they can enjoy it too. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you accepted an invitation to the great banquet, the feast in the kingdom of God? If you haven't, don't delay. Don't make excuses because you may not have another chance to accept his invitation. Are you ready to accept Christ's invite to this great banquet and spend eternity with Christ in heaven? If you are ready, would you come today as we sing?
When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still. <coughs> Trust and obey. worshiping with us at Athens Christian Church. Here are a few things that are coming up in the weeks ahead. Our missions team is collecting items for children in Somalia. We will be collecting the items listed through August 7th. Collection boxes are located in the lobby and the kids check-in area. You can also drop off items during our Summer Connection event tonight. This free family fun community event will have games for all ages, food, and a celebration, praise, and worship service to end the evening. Check out the dunk tank schedule and don't miss your chance to dunk some of our ministers and church members. We hope to see you there tonight. High school students are invited to join us on August 13th for paintball. The cost is $40 and includes all equipment and lunch. The bus will leave at 7.30 a.m. and return around 2.30 p.m. Wednesday night connection will be starting soon. Mark your calendars now for September 7th through November 16th and join us for dinner and classes for all ages. We have six classes for adults as well as classes for our children and youth. You can sign up in the lobby today. We are still in need of several volunteers for Wednesday Night Connection too. You can sign up in the lobby to join one of these teams or contact Shane to help prepare meals or contact Lorna to help with Kids Club. We have a fun senior bus trip coming up on September 30th. We will be heading to the Conklin Barn Dinner Theater for dinner and a show. The cost is $48 and money is due to the church by September 11th. There are only 20 spots available, so make sure to sign up in the lobby to reserve your spot today. If you are interested in any of these events, please sign up in the lobby. You can also find out more about each of these events and more on our website, our app, our monthly Lifeline newsletter, our Sunday Bulletin, and our Facebook page. If you are visiting with us today, we have a free Bible we would love to send home with you. Please see one of our ministers before you leave today and leave a connection card and one of our offering boxes so we can follow up with you. As we prepare for our time of communion, we'll be singing the first and third verses of number 432 in your hymnal, Softly and Tenderly.
Certainly, if we've made Jesus Lord and Savior of our life, we will one day enjoy a great feast in heaven. But this morning, we gather around the table, around the meal that Jesus left for us to remember him by while we are here on earth. And as we gather around the communion table, we remember his sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. As we take the bread, we remember his body. As we take the cup, we remember the blood that was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. We also remember that Jesus didn't just die and stay in that tomb. He rose from the dead, and he has promised that one day he will return to take us home to be with him. In a moment after I pray, the music will play. Please spend as much time as you need to reflect on what Christ has done for you, and then when you're ready, you may take communion located around the room. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have set out this meal for us. So while we walk through this life, we can never forget how much you loved us and how much you cared about us. How much you're on our side. How much you'll walk through each and every struggle that we face. How much you'll walk through us even when times are good. Because you love us. And Lord, as we walk through our weeks, um, there are generally ups and downs. Lord, we just want to bring it all to you this morning. And we thank you that you are here for us. And your love is able to cover our sins. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.